Hey guys, it's Punchy. Today I have a guide about the first layer of the depths. This may be very late after the game's release, but with the new information about the second layer, I've got to make sure you guys know about everything in the first layer before trying out the new stuff, which is currently in the works. Thank you guys for the support on my video on Elden Ring ideas. I would like to say, if you don't like and subscribe, you'll be made in list, so make sure you hit those buttons to support my channel. Thank you guys, and enjoy. So, first things first, let's explain how to get to the depths. You can either die two times in the overworld, die three times consecutively in PvP, die by Primadon, die in the Void Sea, or send yourself to the depths through a whirlpool. It's self explained when you die after having the injured status on your health bar and in PvP, so if you want to go there easily, you can die to an NPC. But you risk losing loot on death. Promadon is also a top candidate for sending people to the depths. Sometimes you won't be sent there after he kills you, but it is intended to send you right into the ocean. Fitting, right? When you're in the Void Sea, you can either die to a monster or take a whirlpool to enter. It's much better to take a whirlpool because you don't drop anything once entering, and it allows you to go to the Diver Castle if that's something you want to do. Go through a whirlpool. Let's talk about the city. To enter the city, you can either enter normally through two different sides, which I'll call slope side or flat side. Slopeside has a ravine type of area and it's on the side opposite of Flatside. When entering through Slopeside, you will be entering one of the Death City Districts, the District of Commerce. Apparently, this was how the Seltors made a bunch of money before it sank into the ocean. Within the City of Commerce, there isn't much to do here besides leaving. This is the easiest place to leave the depths, so you can either book it straight forward into the open gate or boost yourself up with some handy barrel parkour to get straight to the trial. Something to note is that all the houses in the City of Commerce have white roofs. Moving through the tunnel on the left will enter the first part of the City of the Drowned. In the City of the Drowned, there's going to be some scary Stranger Things monsters that will spawn angels if you're Spotted, but a key tip for navigation is to never look up, just keep moving forward like Aaron Yeager. Anyway, they have no ankles, so it's pretty easy to escape. In the first part of City of the Drowned, there's no NPCs to interact with, but there are a couple things to note. This is a great place to get urchins, and there is a location where you can ring a bell. This is integral to escape in a new server, because the door I showed you in the City of the Drowned won't open unless you ring four of these bells, which are all around the city. All of the houses in the first part of the City of Drowned have dark green roofs. Taking a left, we'll enter the secondary part of the City of the Drowned, and this place has some purpose. If you go left past the urchins, we can enter the second part of the City of the Drowned, to pick up shadow magic and ring another bell. Just hop up past this short wall and climb the building in order to ring the second bell to open that front gate to escape. Again, watch out for watchers because they will be scanning this area too. Left of the bell spot, there's a building with an open gap at the bottom where we can slide in and talk to our friend Nostor. You'll need five umbral obsidian for shadows, so keep that in mind. If we continue the circular path of the city before leaving, we can speak to another NPC, Lucy. She looks like a Nick fiend without a hit, and she's pretty much freaking out. She says the divers are looking for her, and that's about it. The second part of the city of the drowned has turquoise roofs. Moving right from Lucy, we enter the third part of the city of the drowned. We've made it all around the city, so this is where you would enter through Flatside. There's an NPC here to talk to as well as a monster. If you go straight, if entering from Flatside, you can hear some digging which comes from Squibbo. Basically, he throws hands and is tough to kill. He has some range attacks, faints, and moves fast. If you kill him, you can get an odd tentacle and a chest. This is one of the only ways to improve rep with divers, so moving past him is where we speak to Petrus, who is another person struck with insanity. He just talks about some nonsense. This area has light green roofs. Left of this is the first part of the Veracosta district. There are NPCs in here to talk to as well as a third bell we can ring for the door. Up in one of these buildings, there's a cell tour named Glid that talks about how long he's been in the depths. There's also a dude named Jeremiah down below that trades gems for random loot, and it's not worth it in my opinion. This place has red and brown roofs. Last part of the city is the Veracosta district with the purple houses. There's a bell in here that you can ring as well, and also an NPC. There's Raphael, who talks about hitting up a dude named Morning, but there's nobody on the surface who mentions this, so it has no purpose as of now. That's all there is to the city, and I'll talk about the trial in a little bit. If you want to go talk to the divers, you can head left from Flatside to go all the way over to Castle Light. The divers castle is pretty cool and it has some interesting lore to offer as well. You can only enter Castle Light if you went through a whirlpool, and it will reject you otherwise. Inside, you can repair your armor and talk to the Felinor girl who rotates a selection of armor schematics per day. You can also join the divers if you talk to Akira first, which is found in some rare events versus the ignition. Akira is very important if you want to unlock your willpower, and if you're interested, you can always check out this video on willpower. There is also a diver camp in the depths, which is to the right of slope side, and it offers a safe area where you can take off equipment at the lockers. Don't go here if you have a bad rep with the divers, because you will get jumped. If you're going for Vision Shaper, you can go right of flat side and down to the cave with a Widow, where you can run past it and hit up Surge. For more details on Vision Shaper, you can also reference my video about how I made it, but that's how you get there. When you have a bell, you can talk to Yun Shoal, which is from the right of flat side, and there's an entrance to the left and right of the area. When speaking to the statue, you can re-roll your bell, flaws, or just escape from the depths. You can only talk to him about bell re-rolls if you remove your tarnish effect at Yama in Songseeker, but he gives you some options. Every 10 levels, he'll give you a wish. So if you're level 40 and you get a bell, you can re-roll twice. If you're looking to farm in the depths, you can ring two corrupted bells in order to make more corrupted mobs spawn. One of these black bells is straight from the flat side and to the right. It'll be inside of a church. The other bell is way past the church, which is left of slope, and it's next to the coral forest. It's pointless to ring this bell if you have ringed the first one, because you can only ring one every 30 minutes or once per server. 
forever. Regardless, it'll make stuff spawn more. But if you are trying to farm in the depths, I do have some tips. If low level, make sure to only fight crabs or lionfish because they're quite easy to predict as well as escape from. Look for jellyfish when you fight so you can always get a health pack. If you end up farming successfully, the XP is the best in the game and every chest has some high-end items. I won't be telling you how to farm each mob in the depths because it would pretty much be me telling you how to block parry or dodge, but all of the mob information you need is going to be based on experience, so if you want to learn how to fight each mob, you're going to have to try it out for yourself. Based on my testing, I found that enemies will spawn based on player proximity and location on a map. In a server with 3 people, the side with 2 people will receive all the spawns while the dude alone gets nothing. In a server with 8 people, the side with more people will receive the spawns unless a player is within close proximity to another. Pretty much one side will get all the spawns all the time. There is also a requirement for players for owls and scribbles to spawn, so you will notice that when there's more people, you will get more of these spawns. This was designed like this to encourage player encounters when looking for monsters. Let's talk about unused content. The Marauders area, which is near the Coral Forest, is dangerous due to the weirdly placed kill bricks, but it's empty with nothing inside. There is also an NPC who's a mudskipper that talks about some weird stuff, but it doesn't have much to do with any in-game events or loot. I wish they would do something cool with this, but for the meantime, looks like he'll be waiting in the coral forever. In the depths, you can get some materials that are scattered around the map. Urchins, scallops, or coral are exclusive to the depths. Scallops and coral, I recommend hopping a spot to collect them, but urchins are usually found on walls, so they're pretty common. Some basic mechanics that are exclusive to the depths are permadeath and insanity. If you do die in the depths, you'll be sent to purgatory, so expect to restart your character. Insanity also acts as a time limit. You're allowed to stay in the depths, but if it increases in intensity after finding certain mobs, I would recommend leaving. If your screen starts turning blue, make sure to leave, but it's not very threatening. Here is a video I made about how insanity works and why it hopefully gets more scary in layer 2. The last thing to do in the depths is to escape. However you do it, either climbing up or going through the gates, you gotta go through the elevator and hit the button on the way up. Each trial is what you need to do to escape, and it changes per level. If you're level 0 to level 10, you won't have a trial. Level 10 to 20 is a mud skipper or bandit. 20 to 29, you should be fighting an angel. 30, you'll get a sharko, and 40 to 50, expect a corrupted sharko. Level 50 to 60 is when you start getting enforcers. Every single time you go to the depths and escape, it will show you a stat in your summary called Drowned. Every time you drown, it will basically add a level to your trial, so you can end up fighting an enforcer at level 40 if you've drowned 10 times. But luckily, the first time you escape the depths, you will get a card called Depths Connection, which allows for passive reservoir regeneration. Again, I can't tell you guys how to fight them because it is all based on experience, but I would only recommend going in for a group if you're doing enforcers. It's much easier to deal with an enforcer if you know what you're doing, in contrast to multiple corrupted sharkos. And that's layer 1. This guy was for everybody that starts up the game in the future, and just some information about the area before we get a depths expansion. Thank you guys for watching and make sure to like and subscribe for more content similar.